Hi everybody and welcome back to Narrow Path Man with myself Luke McCann. So today I want to talk to you, well tell you about a pretty cool story first of all and talk to you about this book which some of you may be familiar with, some of you you're about to be, um, called The Poem of the Man God. Um, since 1993 the, the title of the book changed and it's now called The Gospel as Revealed to Me by a lady called Maria Valtorta. She was an Italian lady um, who basically saw or claimed to see and have visions of the ministry of, of Jesus Christ. So um, basically for years, she was an invalid. She was, she was bedridden for years. And basically she saw visions of, of Jesus. So um, I know that sounds pretty crazy, but um, there are all sorts of testimonies from, from different people within the church who encourage you basically to to read her her writings and her and her stories just because he was mentioned so heavily in the um the consecration to saint joseph blessed gabriel allegra he was the guy for those of you who've who've done the consecration to saint joseph father calloway talked about him um quite a lot he was the guy who translated the bible into chinese so um i'll just quickly read out to you what he said about the book I do not believe a genius could thus accomplish this gospel narration. The finger of God is here. He also said, its language more than dignified is fascinating. And when it speaks of the Madonna, there is a sweetness and a truly heavenly enchantment. And then in a separate letter, he wrote, as you desire, I want to write so many things to you about our Lord as seen by one who lives in his land, but time fails me. However, I assure you that the poem of the man God immensely surpasses whatever descriptions, I do not say of mine because I do not know how to write, but of any other writer. It is a work which makes one grow in the knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus and of his holy mother. So pretty big words from blessed Gabriel Allegra. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you at the end of this video, I'll do the, the screencast thing so you can see my screen and I'll just show you some of the other, um, other people who have met, made testimonies to these writings, but they include Padre Pio, um, Saint Mother Teresa, uh, Pope Pius VII and, and many others. So, um, yeah, really cool stuff. So effectively, again, as you can see, so this is the second volume. It's a, if you get this original, The Poem of the Man God, it's um, a five book anthology. So this is the second one. This is the first one. Now, this one's 30 years old. This one's a couple of years old. And my mother keeps it in some sort of uh, well-wrapped up condition, basically, to keep it in good form. But basically, it's difficult to get these original copies now. That's why it's, it's more accessible and I'll, I'll put links in the description below and I'll show you them in the screencast afterwards. Um, yeah, the, since the title changed in 1993 to the, um, the gospel as revealed to me, it's more accessible effectively, but it's quite expensive to get those books. So I'll also show you links where you can listen to the audiobook. You can You can pay for the official audiobook on Audible, but there are also different people who've, who've read it out and that's available on YouTube. So there are free links, which I'll, I'll put in the links in the, in the description below and I'll show you at the end of the video. But basically, this is something which has been in our house throughout my life. And it's always been something that I have known deep down that I'll read at some stage. But because they're quite big books, I'm not the best reader. I typically like prefer to listen to audiobooks. And I'm just aware that it's a pretty massive amount to read it's always been something that i've put off put off put off but what i'm going to do is at the start of lent i'm going to like this isn't my lent i'll just whatever i end up doing for lent in the end i'll just you know keep private you should probably do that but um but during lent anyway every morning i'm going to just set myself like a timer of 30 minutes and just you know even if i go slowly even if i go quickly whatever every day i'm just going to make sure i chug through it so you know potentially if you've never heard about this before and you start reading it or start learning about it or listening to the audiobook that would be a wonderful thing but um so i'll just tell you about the story about how 
it's come into our house and it's it's a pretty cool story. Uh, I only really found out about this today when I was asking more questions. So um, basically, there was there's a lady who who passed away, a family friend of ours who passed away uh, a little over a month ago, and um, yeah, she was it was always a, a friend of my mum. She she worked with my mum. Would have been I don't know twenty years older than my mum type thing. Sort of she died an old lady, but she was never an old lady. You know, real real fight and fire in her type thing, good humor the whole way to the end. But um, basically 1989, so this is two years before I was born. This lady um, was saying to my mom, listen, I'm going to this place called Medjugorje. Um, at, the, at the time, I don't think either of them had even heard of it. It was in then Yugoslavia, now Bosnia, Herzegovina, I believe just just on the border with, uh, with Croatia. But basically, there was this book, which this lady got my mum to read, called Is the Virgin Mary Appearing at Medjugorje? An Urgent Message for the World in a Marxist Country. And initially, my mum was saying, she was like, didn't really think much of this, but thought it was an intriguing story. So read this book by a guy called René Laurentin. But um, the more she read it, she was starting to think, you know, this you got to realize this is a, a communist country Yugoslavia at this stage so while people were technically allowed to celebrate mass you know there were no mass gatherings allowed almost similar to now in different ways we're getting there but um you know it wasn't the sort of place where people where kids would randomly be just saying look our ladies appearing to us here um you know, you, you wouldn't put yourself and put your family in that danger unnecessarily. So that was the thing which really kind of got the intrigue going for, for my mom. But basically this lady was saying, look, I'm going to Medjugorje here with this group in a few weeks, if you'd like to go. And at the time, my mom was about 36. Um, I'm the youngest in our family by like nine years. So she had my two elder sisters and my brother then, my dad was there and like, you know, one, we wouldn't have had the money for my mum to just randomly go to Medjugorje um, and two, just even the practicality of it. It just isn't something that would have happened, but call it coincidental, call it whatever. Uh, apparently, I only heard this today, which is kind of funny, but um, at the time, my mum was working in BT, British Telecom. It's like a phone company in the UK um, and Ireland. Um and basically they had been fighting for, for a pay increase apparently at this time and didn't really necessarily expect that they were going to, you know, anything was going to come of it. But apparently whatever way it worked out, they won their pay increase. And because it was a few months after the kind of financial year end, the money was backdated for a few months, the kind of increment that you would have got for those first few months was all paid as a lump. And basically my mom said she got exactly the amount of money that she needed to go on this trip. So, you know, coincidental again, I'm sure. Yeah. But anyway, so mom went on this trip, right? And just before she went on this trip, she had been reading this monthly magazine called the Medjugorje Herald. And in it, there was this piece by, by a Catholic writer. Some of you may know him. I, I hadn't heard of him before, but um, he was called Wayne Weeble. And he had actually been talking about this book, The Poem of the Man God. So, um, mum didn't think anything of it, went to Medjugorje. She's just sitting outside the main church in Medjugorje and she notices that there's a lady reading this book. Um, poem of a man of god right so again didn't really think too much of it enjoyed her experience there came home went to kind of like a holy shop there and they had one book they had one copy and it was this one here so it was the second volume or five volumes of this original book poem of the man of god so she got it i am i'm actually i almost don't like opening it because there are that many bookmarks and things like that in it the woman's read it 10,000 10, times at least, I'd say, over the years. But um, anyway, so yeah, it's something that 
my mum's always wanted me to read and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get to that at some stage, but yeah. So, um, I just want to read out to you. Let's see here. Just to give you an idea of the sort of writings, what to ex expect from this book. And this is just a description of Jesus as Maria Valtorta saw him. Now it'll just take about two minutes. It's about two pages. I'll read through. So, Bear with me, and then I'll show you links as to how you can find the book yourself. And it really seems that a veil of solemn, joyful peace is laid out wherever he turns his blue eyes. Purity and peace flow from his eyes, wisdom from his lips, and love from his heart. What I am about to say may seem impossible to the reader of these pages, and yet the same place which before Jesus' coming was an ordinary place or a busy place, excluding the possibility of peace, which supposedly should be free from work bustling, is ennobled as soon as he appears there. And the bustling becomes orderly and does not bar the possibility of supernatural thoughts mingled with manual labor. I do not know whether I have made myself clear. Jesus, Jesus is never sullen, not even when he is more disgusted with something that has happened but is always majestically dignified and communicates such a supernatural dignity to the place in which he moves. Jesus is never a jolly fellow or a complainer, laughing coarsely or looking hypochondriac, not even in the moments of greatest delight or deepest depression. His smile is inimitable. No painter will ever be able to reproduce it. It is like a light emanating from his heart. A bright light in the, in the hours of the greatest joy because a soul has been redeemed or approaches perfection. I would say a rosy smile when he approves of the spontaneous deeds of his friends or disciples and enjoys their company. A, brew, a blue angelic smile to remain in the field of the hues when he bends over children to listen to them, teach them and bless them. A smile mitigated by piety when he looks at the miseries of the flesh or the spirit, finally a divine smile, when he speaks of his father or his mother, or looks at or listens to his most pure mother. I've never seen him, uh, I have never seen him hypochondriac, not even in the hours of bitter torment, during the torture of being betrayed, during the anguish when he sweated blood and the spasm of his passion. If melancholy overwhelmed the sweat refulgence of his smile, it was not sufficient to cancel the peace, which is like a diadem shining with heavenly gems on his smooth forehead and enlightening his divine person. Neither have I seen him indulge with, neither have I seen him indulge in immoderate merriment. He is not averse to a hearty laugh when the case demands it, but he, is, but he immediately resumes his noble serenity. But when he laughs, he prodigiously looks younger to the extent of looking like a 20 year old man. And the world seems to blossom through his lovely, hearty, loud, melodious laughter. Neither can I say that I have seen him do things hurriedly, whether he moves or speaks. He does so calmly without, however, being sluggish or listless. It is probably because tall as he is, he can stride without running to go a long way. And he can likewise reach a distance, distant things without having to stand up to do so. Even the way he moves is certainly gentlemanly and majestic. And what about his voice? Well, I have heard him speak for almost two years. And yet, at times, I lose the thread of his speech as I become so engrossed in studying his voice. And Jesus very kindly and patiently repeats what he said. And he looks at me with a smile of the good master to ensure that nothing is missing in his dictation. Because of my delight in enjoying and listening to his voice and in studying its tone and charm. But after two years, I am not in a position to say precisely what tone it is. I definitely exclude the bass tone and also the light tenor tone, but I'm always doubtful whether it's a powerful tenor voice or a perfect baritone voice with a very wide vocal range. I would say that it's the latter because his voice at times takes bronze-like notes, mellow and so deep particularly when he speaks to a sinner to lead him back to grace or he po points out the human deviations to crowds. 
But when he analyzes or condemns forbidden things or he shows the hypocrisy of men, the bronze notes of his voice become clearer. And they are as sharp as the peal of thunder when he imposes the truth or his will. And they vibrate like a sheet of gold struck with a crystal hammer when he sings the praises of mercy or exalts the work of God. But the timber of his voice is a most loving one when he speaks to or about his mother. Jesus's voice is then really imbued with love, the reverent love of his son and the love of God who praises his most perfect work. And he uses the same tone, although not so strongly when speaking to his favorites, to converts and to children. And his voice never tires, not even in the long, very long speeches, because it colors and completes his thoughts and words, emphasizing their power or kindness according to the case. And at times I remain, remain still with the pen in my hand listening and then realize that he has gone too far ahead and that, I, that it's impossible for me to catch him. And I remain still and Jesus kindly repeats the words. He does the same when I am interrupted to teach me to patiently endure bothersome, bothersome things or people. And I make him understand how bothersome they are when they deprive me out of the beatitude of listening to Jesus. So, I mean, that's beautiful. You know, that's just halfway through the book, two random pages. How beautiful is that? So it's something that I'm looking forward to, something I've put off for a million bazillion years, procrastination station, let's say. And um, yeah, I mean, I suppose if you have any thoughts on this book, if any of you have read it, any objections or anything, because I did notice through some research there that back in the glory days, whenever this first came out, um, different parts of the church weren't too happy about it, but it does seem that more lately over the decades, it has been much more well received and obviously have gone through the different people who um, have seriously strong testimonies towards it. So um, yeah, last thing I'll say, and then I'll split, I'll finish this video, but go onto the screen share bit is I was thinking, I'm obviously doing this podcast interview with Father Calloway on the 22nd of February, all being well. And um, yeah, if if you guys would like to ask any questions to Father Calloway, um, that'd probably be a great idea. So if you want to, you know, put in the comment section or anything like that, if there's any particular questions and, you know, I'll probably ask two or three of those questions when I'm when I'm chatting with him. So, yeah, I'll I'll um, I'll move on to the screen share thing. All righty. So here is the main website for um, Maria Valtorta and her master work, The Gospel Has Revealed to Me, formerly the Poem of the Man God. It's actually a pretty strange name for the website. It's bardstown.com and then a funny little ending. So I'll put this um, website link at the very, very, very top of the description just to make it clear for you. But basically there's all sorts of links and testimonies which um, are available on this website. From this website, you can find the Valtorta app, which basically shows you the corresponding gospel readings um, that, that go alongside all of the different um, visions which, which Maria Valtorta has, has written down for us. Um, so yes, again, originally called the Poem of the Man God. You can still get copies of these books, but they're all typically used and, and quite expensive. And then it's now called The Gospel as is Revealed to Me. So initially, The Poem of Man God was a five book anthology. Now it's a 10 book anthology. So you can get the uh, the newer edition, 1993 onwards, pretty easily. Um, again, though, not, not inexpensive. So yeah, it's something to think about. And then Audible, you can you can get The Gospel as is Revealed to Me, the different volumes on Audible. But I'll put links. I'll put links for all these things in the description below. But you can get audiobooks. So live a life I love, love it. Has a four and a half hour. Is this potentially the full first poem of the Man God anthology book? Potentially, I've listened to some of it. It's very very good quality. It's worth listening to. So I'll link it in the description below. And then this absolute gent Massimo Bozzi. Um, has gone through the entire five book anthology and read it out himself just while chilling in his house at home. So fair play to that man doing God's work. And yeah, 
again from this original link you can find testimony so I read out some of the quotes that Blessed Gabriel Allegra had to say on the book but there's there's several other people have just taken a few here as an example St. Patrick Pio, Mother Teresa and I know that earlier in the video I said Paul Pope Pius the seventh obviously I need to brush up on my Roman numerals because it's clearly Pope Pius the twelfth but yeah so um yeah that pretty much covers it again any questions on this any thoughts feedback would love to hear your thoughts and one more time I'll tell you if you would like to have any questions that I will ask Father Calloway obviously I can't ask everybody's but if you want to put some intriguing ones or interesting ones in the comment section below I'll get to them so yep much love god bless keep the faith See ya.